Dr. Natalie Marks, and we're back with a quick cup of knowledge. Joining me today is Dr. Nate Nelson. He's a boarded radiologist and a clinical associate professor at North Carolina State University. Thanks so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. We're really excited to talk to you today all about ultrasound. It's a really great diagnostic tool, of course, as you know. Um, but I think there's a lot of practices and probably a lot of veterinarians and technicians listening today and watching today um, that don't have it in their practice and maybe don't know what they're missing. What are some of the advantages of having ultrasound in a day practice? Yeah, it's something that we've seen a lot more interest in because I think people are starting to become a little more aware of the advantages. I think the big advantage is just the non-invasive ability to see inside the dog's abdomen and the number of diseases that you can diagnose without actually going into a dog's abdomen with surgery is just absolutely amazing. And 20, 30 years ago, that wasn't an option. It was either do some radiographs, maybe the you know, changes are equivocal, we're not real sure. Uh, now we have to make a clinical decision based on blood work and all these other things. Now we have a way to quickly within 10, 20, 30 minutes see what's going on inside the dog's abdomen. Is that mass coming from the small intestine? Is it coming from the liver? Is there bleeding? Is there other changes in the abdomen that can change what we do? So the ability to sort of quickly and non-invasively get to an answer has just completely changed uh, most of the uh, workup for abdominal cases. But it's not just abdomens, right? Not just abdomens. And yeah. I think when, when folks are looking at getting ultrasound machines, sometimes we forget that, that you can actually look at other parts of the body. Uh, echocardiography is, of course, huge mm -hmm. in the veterinary world now. But also other parts of the, 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 the sort of the body are easily accessible, especially the eye. The eye would be a good example. You have a dog that comes in for hyphema. Was it trauma? Does it have a retinal detachment? Is it a mass? All those things are actually pretty easily answered with ultrasound. And the nice thing with something like the eyes, it's a very small area. It's easily accessible. Without a lot of training, you can get a, a pretty good answer. Uh, the neck is another one. Mm -hmm. I feel a mass. What's it coming from? Is it coming from thyroid? Is it lymph node? The, the neck actually is also a fairly easy area to ultrasound. It's superficial. The anatomy is very reproducible. So within usually about 10 minutes of training at a course, you can feel pretty good about what normal is, and then it gives you a lot of power to go back into practice and, and use that on a day-to-day -day basis even. And I think the other common misconception is, is that ultrasound um, is not for everyone, right? That there's a lot of training involved in practice, which there is, but there's a lot of different levels of how you can use ultrasound in your practice, certainly doing full scans, as you've mentioned, but also just teaching people how to do appropriate cystocentesis, correct? Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a range. And in fact, the, the one of the challenges with ultrasound is just getting to a comfort level of using it. And I think people are under the, the misconception that every scan has to be a full abdomen ultrasound at the level that a radiologist might do it, and I don't think that's true. I think of it in terms of levels of difficulty, so the easy organs, and they're, just, they're hard organs. And the good news is most of the relatively easy organs is where we see a lot of major pathology. So something like the urinary bladder, it's easily accessible. It's in a thinner part of the dog, back in the caudal abdomen. Even a really fat dog, it's actually not too hard to find that the bladder has good internal contrast because it's filled with the urine. So if that dog has got the hematuria, put the probe on, you can see calculi pretty easily, see masses, and usually with a pretty high degree of confidence. Um, another example would be the azotemic animal. The kidneys are relatively easy to find compared to other organs, and you can see is there a mass? Do I have hydronephrosis? All these things that actually seem fairly complicated. Once you've seen a couple examples at a lab or a, a training seminar, you actually can go with a, a fair amount of confidence and get to there pretty, pretty accessibly. Some of the organs are a little more challenging, so things like the adrenals and the pancreas, those do take uh, quite a bit more time to train and be comfortable with, but the good news is that's a smaller subsegment of really what we're looking at. So mm -hmm. in a busy practice, I think if you have a very specific clinical question about the urinary system, about the spleen or the liver, I think it's very a good use of ultrasound to actually go and just try to answer those questions. And what about fast scans? Yeah, so fast scans are also really popular, and that's another area that um, we do a lot of training in. and the. In, especially in dogs and cats, they really shouldn't have any belly fluid. So if I see abdominal fluid right away, that's abnormal. Mm -hmm. And the good news is with fast scanning, there are some certain areas that fluid tends to pool and congregate. So if, once you become familiar with those, it's then pretty easy to say yay or nay, is there fluid or not. If there is, then something usually fairly serious is going on. And I know I need to either do some other diagnostic or try to get a sample of that fluid. Um, but that's also a pretty easy access point to getting into scanning is, is there fluid or is there not? Once you sort of recognize it, you can get to that point pretty quickly, with ultrasound. So a lot of different levels of ways that practices can implement this, but this is not just for the veterinarian or the associates at the practice. Um, explain how technicians can really get involved. Yeah. So actually that's another area of huge growth and uh, we've taught some courses just recently at the Quendo Center and um, the technician labs are some of my favorite ones to teach because they're very enthusiastic. 
and they see the, the potential of what they can bring to a practice. So just to, at places I've worked in academics, we actually have pretty routinely technicians that are trained up to do scans. So what I'll often do with my technicians, um, you know, these are technicians who have taken a couple of courses at like the Equendo Center, for instance, um, have done a little bit of practice in their, in their environment at home. Um, but they get to the point where they can go through and they acquire the images so that I can then just come at the end and just do my check and I don't have to worry about saving and documenting mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. They know which um, sort of shots and which you know, areas I want saved mm -hmm. and it saves me a ton of time. So some of that might take me 40 minutes if I want to do a full belly in a fairly complicated patient. That takes it probably to half or even less mm -hmm. than that So then I can just go through and spot check. Um, and some of them, uh, some of the technicians, when they get to a level where they're comfortable, they'll just save a couple of quick ultrasound movie clips I don't even necessarily always feel the need to go through and do the whole admin because I, I know that's where they're at. And that's a closer model to what they have on the human side where technicians acquire the images, the radiologists or the, the, the doctors just go through and interpret them. And so you can develop that relationship with time with somebody and it can really save a, a lot of veterinarian effort as well. And the technicians really, really enjoy it as well, it's, the ones I've worked with. It's a great way to empower them in yeah, practice. Yeah, absolutely, for, absolutely. So for the veterinarians and technicians that are watching that are now really excited about getting ultrasound. Yeah. You mentioned the Equendo Center. Yeah. What would one of those labs look like? So uh, we have technician lab, then we have a series of labs for veterinarians and they're tailored to different skill levels and uh, sort of experience levels. So I'll start with a basic training mm -hmm. um, uh, series. So usually there are two to three days depending on uh, the particular course and we try to combine lab with lectures and the lectures aren't just us necessarily getting up there and it's a PowerPoint of this is normal and this is normal. It's really case studies is what we really try to focus on. So here's this lab, it's presented for hematuria. Let's see what we got. And then if you show videos of the kidneys, we show videos of the, uh, the bladder, because uh, the videos really show you the pathology in a way that, that stills just don't. And then we'll talk about it. What do you think? What's abnormal? And it's a way of sort of using the terminology and also building, I think, confidence in, in what you're seeing on the screen and understanding what it is. So that would be sort of a beginner level. And we would focus mostly on the big organs, so the urinary bladder, the kidneys, um, a general overview of the, the GI. And then as we get to the intermediate and the advanced courses, we sort of cover uh, the large organs, some more complex pathology, so things that are a little bit more subtle, um, but then also the smaller organs. So we really start to focus on the adrenals and the pancreas mm -hmm. and some of the, the organs which it would probably be, it wouldn't be a, a good choice, I think, to start that early because they're, mm -hmm. they're a little more complicated to find. Um, but we have a lot of veterinarians that feel like they're at the point where they want to start looking for those and talking about some of that more complicated anatomy. And so we'll still do case studies and we'll mix that in with in-lab in scanning. Um, the Quendo Center does a fantastic job. It's one of the most well-organized labs I've ever been in, uh, in large part because the technicians have been doing it so, so long that as an instructor, it's great for me because I can walk in, we can teach our, our case studies, and we just go right in the lab and we're ready to get going. The dogs are, are well laid out, they're clipped, everything's re ready to go, they're well monitored, so I feel comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. um, and so things just go really well. We've got really good feedback from participants. Uh, for the technician labs, uh, we tend to have a very similar setup, although we might do sometimes a little bit less case studies and more scanning to really try to develop those hands-on, okay, these are the images you want to get, and then maybe a little bit less of what they necessarily mean in that pathology side of things. Well, I, I think everyone who's watching is very interested in yeah. ultrasound, and it's certainly a, a great addition to practice, not just for personal empowerment, but certainly for patient yeah. care yeah. and early diagnosis of disease. So yeah. thank you so much for what you're Absolutely. doing, and best of luck with the rest of the conference and Equendo, and yeah. thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you much.